the thumb lock basic technique shooting bare thumb using a light bar it's quite useful to start off at least once to shoot bare thumb whether you actually shoot or just draw the bow back because it gives you a feeling for how the bowstring is pushing against the thumb. Then when you wear a thumb guard or an archer's ring, you can tell if it's working properly. Is it making it easier? If you start out with a ring particularly, you can actually not have a good idea of whether it's effective or not. And you feel it's working great, but in fact it's not. As you just saw, I'm demonstrating how the lock is set up. Three fingers are curled tightly into the palm. The thumb is pushed against the side of the middle segment of the middle finger. And the index finger is lightly draped over it, not curled around it tightly. The strength of the thumb lock is in the pressure of the thumb on the other three fingers. The index finger is acting like a trigger, to some extent a psychological trigger, because when you open it, the thumb opens immediately after. You don't want to open the thumb first. This will result in injury to the thumb tip, thumbnail, an arrow that doesn't fly correctly, and generally uh, it's, it's a poor performance. Notice here that uh, I try occasionally not to look at the arrows I'm knocking. In this case, I'm uh, checking a feather. The reason for doing that is that, in uh, particularly in combat situations, you would be watching your enemy because they might be about to shoot at you, and you want to be able to try and dodge or generally get out of the way. And of course, they might be moving, so you might not have a target where you expect to see it. So the basic principle is you knock without looking at the bow, the arrow, the string or anything else. It's easy if you've got uh, a knocking um, marker on your string. Uh, in this case there's uh, some thread tied around the, uh, the serving on the string uh, just, where the, uh, just above where the arrow is meant to go. You might also notice if you look carefully that the arrow is knocked slightly above the level that you would expect to keep it perfectly horizontal. This is a safety procedure when you start out. Uh, you know, particularly in Korean bows, it's, it's uh, a normal thing to do because of the flexibility of the limbs. But by having the arrow knock a bit higher, there's less chance of um, hitting yourself with the arrow as it goes past. Here is a basic, simple leather thumb guard single flat piece of leather with a hole cut in it and shaped to a general teardrop shape. Uh, the leather is about four millimeters thick and it's uh, vegetable tan. Notice where the pressure is going, it's going on the lip. It's not going at the edge of the hole, though the string comes really close to that and you can actually sometimes feel it if you turn the thumb too far around. Uh, by which I mean hooking the thumb around the string. You don't want to hook the thumb, you want to have the thumb at right angles to the plane of the bowstring. By which I mean the thumb is, if you're facing, or if the bow and arrow are facing directly to your left, then your thumb should be facing directly away from you. When you release, the thumb only has to open slightly. The, you, you'd be surprised how fast you can actually release. Uh, slow motion has convinced me a lot faster than I thought you could. But in reality, most of the time what happens is as soon as you open the forefinger and relax the thumb, the bowstring pushes the thumb out of the way. This works particularly well if there's tension in your back at the time you shoot 
because that means that the thumb is being pulled backwards, the bowstring is going forwards. The draw length isn't changed because this all happens in, in one motion. You'll notice that my hand can end up in various places, so I'm experimenting a bit with this uh, for the purposes of the video. There's a lot of places your hand can end up, uh, but you don't want it to end up high in the air, as shown in uh, some miniature paintings. This was a technique done to show off the skill and excellence of the archer not to produce a perfect shot, and as a result, um, it can distract you from the real process of shooting. It's not to say that really good archers can't do it, it's just generally not practical. Uh, uh, Taipuka um, positively discourages you from doing it because he says in combat situations it can cause trouble and this is probably quite true. Again, this is quite a thin small piece of leather. I'm catching it with the thumb against the middle finger. Uh, it, it, it's acting as a, a tab over the flesh of the thumb to protect it from the bowstring. Uh, that's basically all it does. Here is a brass ring. Uh, it's made as a copy of a ring excavated in the area of the Golden Horde. Uh, the copy was done in Turkey. Um, uh, it's really beautifully made. Uh, it's a, quite an effective ring. I bought one slightly too big so that I could put a lining in it. Uh, a thick lining in winter and a thin lining in summer because your thumb changes size uh, related to temperature. It's um, not as easy to use with a light bow as it is with a heavy bow and to be honest uh, the pointy end of the lip uh, can be quite uncomfortable with a very heavy bow uh, because it's driven into the tip of the thumb unless you get the balance just right. It's possible that the design was to encourage you to get that perfect balance in the in the positioning of the ring. It's very hard to tell. But if you're a beginner, you don't really want a ring that's causing you any kind of discomfort. You notice that the setup of this quiver is such that you just reach back and take the arrows. There's no, you don't have to look in the quiver for where the arrows are. You might also notice that it has a, a little square opening on the outside face. Uh, old paintings from the um, early 14th century from Iran show that arrows could be put through that hole, probably to make them more prominent. So you could grab those ones first. Uh, it's clearly a horseman's quiver and the purpose of uh, such a thing is because you're not looking you would pre-load the arrows that you wanted to use first into that area. The other arrows are being uh, kept apart by in my case a fake leopard tail. Uh, we don't have leopards in Australia and even if we did I wouldn't go out and just get one for a tail. That's silly. But in the good old days, when leopards were eating people in the villages, uh, you were showing your um, usefulness, I suppose, by having a spacer made from a leopard's tail. You can e easily use a piece of sheepskin sewn into a tube. Uh, it works perfectly well. But it doesn't show you how brave you are. As you can see, this ring, uh, you turn it slightly to take it off. Uh, it's quite common in metal rings to have slightly oval holes. This is not very common in jade rings or um, ivory rings. Uh, it's occasionally there, but most of the ones I've measured have had the hole a perfect circle. This is just showing you the different ways of, of gripping one of these grips. Um, the um, uh, ridge on the back of the bow is called a, a, a matin in Arabic or metan in Turkish. Uh, it's used to locate the fingers so you get your hand in exactly the same position every time you shoot. The curve um, is highest in the middle and that's basically where the middle finger goes. 
that then positions the um, arrow at the narrow arrow pass. On this bow, uh, despite it being a very small bow, um, my hands are a little bit smaller than it, so my, uh, my position uh, puts the arrow uh, right on the edge of the hand grip leather rather than the arrow pass. Um, you can move the hand up and down a little bit, uh, whatever's the most comfortable for you. Everybody's hand is a different shape to some degree, so you want to get the most comfortable, consistent and repeatable position. You notice that the actual release involves um, the drawing hand forearm, which is perfectly horizontal in line with the arrow, uh, being displaced backwards because the back muscles pull the upper round arm uh, down, uh, you know, only a few centimeters, but that completely um, gets the uh, drawing hand out of the way. You'll see also that uh, I'm reflexing the, the fingers of the drawing hand before I shoot. This normally isn't necessary. When you're doing this properly, um, you'll get them into position uh, as soon as you've knocked the arrow. They'll be, they'll be in the right position. Uh, you'll find, uh, particularly if you're shooting a heavy bow, you clench them more tightly. Um, and actually when I was shooting an 80 pound bow uh, over a period of an hour once I discovered that I actually never relaxed them out of that and I, I drew the arrow out of the quiver with just two fingers and left those three fingers tightly clenched. Uh, it was actually a bit of an effort. The same on the bow hand too, the bow was held very firmly. But that's, that's the nature of a, a heavier bow. Um, here I've discovered that I actually had a arrow with a point uh, I'm doing these practice shots with blunts, uh, screw-in rubber blunts in this case. The reason I'm using carbon arrows is that when you start out and you're practicing, you want to only worry about what you're doing, your form. And uh, wooden and bamboo arrows, uh, whereas they're much more fun to shoot, have a degree of variability that could uh, actually confuse you. You see with this double thickness leather thumb guard, it tends to kind of push your thumb out of position a bit. Uh, this is not a problem with very heavy bows because it's forced into the right position and everything works. With a bow of only 45 to 50 pounds, uh, there's really not enough pressure. This is my favourite ring. I've had this for about, I don't know, 25 years, something like that. It's made out of a piece of copper water pipe. It's about a millimetre thick. I've drawn every weight bow that I've ever been able to draw with it. The um, flat lip uh, spreads out the pressure from the bowstring over the hole of the thumb. Uh, and even a heavy bow can be shot for an hour without uh, any um, bad effects. In fact, I never callous the pad of the last segment of my thumb over 40 years of shooting simply because I made sure that the rings were distributing the weight correctly. Uh, hooking with the, the base of the ring uh, is a, a less successful method. Uh, it tends to um, reposition the string uh, further down on the thumb joint and it uh, also tends to increase your likelihood of hooking the thumb around the string which makes the release choppy and, and, and not very effective. Uh, Manchu rings which are uh, cylindrical rings used by the Manchu and the Qing dynasty in China actually do position the string a long way back uh, but they work very differently from lip thumb rings um, though they serve the same purpose this type of ring, you'll, you'll notice too that um, the index finger even in the middle part of the drawer isn't particularly wrapped around the thumb, it's, it's drooping a bit um, that's because there's no real tension in it. 
this is recommended by all the old authors there are exceptions their exceptions are um, if you're using a technique where you actually hold the thumb back with the index finger or you hold the thumb back with the index and middle finger that means there's no support under the thumb and it's a it's a combined pressure uh, of the thumb and the those one or two fingers this is not a re recommended style by any of the old authors uh, it's mentioned uh, and particularly the two-fingered method uh, which is mentioned in detail uh, is always spoken of as being sluggish in release though suitable for heavy bows I found my practical experience is any bow I can actually draw I can draw with the normal thumb lock with the three fingers closed and the thumb against the side of the middle segment of the middle finger again emphasizing how thin this ring is yet it survived years and years of usage this is a, a, another ring this is the um, brass ring again with the engraving um, this ring works better with a heavier bow even a medium weight bow like this this uh, uh, short Turkish bow it's a comfortable uh, ring its major fault is the pointy tip of the lip which tends to dig into your thumb a bit um, maybe these were meant to be used uh, with longer lips so that the tip was past the pad of the thumb but then it sticks into the side of the middle finger so uh, the pointy tip rings I think there are techniques for using them I believe they're not a good ring to start out with because they can induce bad habits once you're really quite good at the thumb draw I don't think they're very much of a problem at all I am paying more attention to knocking uh, with this bow because there's uh, no knocking point marked on the string uh, when I'm shooting on the field it's not quite so uh, worrisome but uh, here we're doing a video trying to show you how to do things the correct way and some of the things that, that you can get away with when you're, you're shooting casually you wouldn't want to teach anyone to do all archery is based on consistency you want consistent draw length you want your shoulders in the right position you want a balanced stance so effectively what you're doing is you want total repeatability then all your arrows land in the same place um, and aiming just becomes a matter of moving that place to where you want it to be I am pausing because there is noise and various things going past um, on the other side of the road behind where my target is uh, though there's no chance of hitting anything because there's a building and an archery net in the way uh, distractions behind the target can often uh, cause bad shots uh, and uh, so I tend not to shoot if there's anything um, in my sight line behind the target even if it's 200 meters away I mean sometimes you can't do that um, but uh, it's it's quite good to minimize the number of distractions as you can see uh, from this ring which occasionally comes into the right contrast levels um, it's really well made it is very historically accurate um, the uh, uh, the ring makers in Turkey are making beautiful rings it's there's no doubt about it this is the ring I made uh, from uh, a piece of horn from a Rocky Mountain bighorn sheep which was given to me uh, horn rings of this nature and sheep horn rings are very popular because sheep horn for some reason uh, is is a very good material and plus the fact you've got colors and things like that that turn up that make it very pretty this ring shape is popular um, from Turkey through Persia into parts of northern India it's uh, relatively easy to get the, to make one of these rings uh, 
I believe that people have done it only with a drill to make the, the basic hole and a, a file. That's usually how I work. I know one person that managed to make a ring just using um, a nail file um, for the polishing because horn is essentially the same as fingernails. Horn rings usually in constant use last about 15 to 20 years. When they break, they break on the sides, separating the front from the back. But I've got rings that are older than that that I've used. Um, so it's a good material for making rings. But again, when you're starting out, I think a simple leather uh, thumb guard is better. Um, Arab authors um, said that leather thumb guards were best for target archery because they were closest to shooting off bare skin. A and what they meant was there is less displacement of the bowstring in relation to the thumb, uh, which can make things more uncomfortable when you shoot. In fact, there are thumb rings from India that, that actually hook over the string, and, and this is interesting and may have worked, but um, it's anything that complicates the process usually makes it harder to do. Unfortunately, I have a short neck, so I'm really not demonstrating the shoulder positions properly, and uh, if you want to see them, I would suggest you have a look at Justin Ma's um, YouTube videos on the draw. Uh, his um, explanation and demonstration of Gaying's method of, of positioning the shoulders and making sure they're in the right place is probably the best I've seen. The um, methods used here are based on basically the military method. Uh, they're quite simple. They produce a consistent shooting. They don't require a lot of specialised equipment. I hope this has been useful. Goodbye.